We're now going to look at a few types of utility software. So by nature, utility software is very kind of generic and does loads of stuff. So it can analyze, configure, optimize, or maintain system depending on what the actual specific software does. So very generic, but it's a type of system software as opposed to application software. It's usually where it's defined out of the two. So an example would be encryption software, which encrypts and decrypts files. There will be a video on the process of encryption, but it's relatively self-explanatory. You have some data, you scramble it up to make it into ciphertext, and then when you want to decrypt it, you need you basically do the reverse of a process, and you get your data back into what is known as plain text, which is readable. And so this software maybe would encrypt a file attachment for email, and then you send it to your friend, and they can then decrypt it using your key provided and the encryption software. A second example is data compression, which is there just to reduce the size of files, like creating a zip file, zip compressed file in Windows. So there are two ways to do this, lossy and lossless. Lossy is where you actually basically delete part of a file in order to reduce its size, quite an effective method, but obviously there's some disadvantage, like your video quality goes down, for example. Lossless is where it kind of shuffles around bits to make it more efficient. To reduce the store, uh, to reduce the file size, but it's not as effective. If you need to know about this in more detail, there'll be a separate video on it as well. Um, a third example is backup software to create copies of data and allow restoration from copies. It may create a system restore point, a, a, a kind of like a disk image that you can restore in the future. One way it can do this is just a full backup where all data is backed up whenever you select this option. So you've got this software on your computer, you select the backup, and it just collect all the data and create a copy of it. It could also do an incremental backup, this is a slightly better way to do it, but it's more uh, complicated and requires, it needs to keep a record of what it's doing. So this is where you just copy data created after the previous backup. So you may want to run a full backup initially and then an incremental backup periodically, just to copy across the additional files you've added in that time. And of course, for the incremental backup to work, you need a previous full backup to compare it to. So in terms of evaluation, a full backup is slow to create. You've got to copy all the files, but it's very kind of straightforward to restore. You just restore everything. Whereas kind of the opposite is true for an incremental backup. It's fast to create because you're only adding the files you actually need to. You're not doing the whole process again. But then it's then slow to restore because you kind of need to step backwards or in fact, you've got to kind of go from the start and just add it sequentially each smaller backup so it's a slower process to restore a program that requires a bit more explanation is a defragger or just a defragmentation program so talking about hard disks here when you store data it's just put wherever there's available space which means it can become scattered across different sections of a disk you remember a hard disk is a physical disk and it doesn't really care whether data is stored, it just gets put there. If there's any space left, it gets put there. And data isn't necessarily stored in a nice contiguous order. So running this program will reorganize your data so that the data that's related gets moved closer together. And on a hard disk, depending on the location, the actual read time is different. So if the same program's data is stored on different parts of the disk, then it's going to take slightly slower to read them because it's going to have to move around, literally, because it's a physical disk. So doing this defragging actually makes it faster to access. So just to show you this visually, if we've got this data here representing by colors, so we've got if we're going to delete the green data here, it leaves gaps essentially. So if we want to add some data that's got a larger capacity than the deleted data, it's going to leave, it's going to split up basically, it's going to need to jump to the end. So you can see that the data is not contiguous, i.e. in a row. And as I say, this can slow the accessing process down if this was a more drastic uh, scattering. So after defragmentation, it will basically just rearrange it to become more efficient. So in this case, it might just shift across 